Now, my next guest, as he would say, has met and chatted with some of the most significant people in politics, show business and sport. And he's now reliving those encounters for a new radio show. I'm thrilled, delighted to be able to tell you that. So Michael Parkinson is joining us now. Hello to you. Hi, OK. I've not seen you for ages, my darling, except on telly. Uh -huh. Well, it's always lovely to see you whenever I can. What made you decide you. to do a new show? I was, uh, for, for many years now, I've been fighting a lone Cape Crusader battle against those ignorant people in broadcasting who have, have risen out my favourite music, namely jazz. So I had an offer from Jazz FM to do half a dozen shows, and the first one went out last night, and, and I'm delighted they had a good sense to do that because it needs promoting that wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, casket of music that's lying there, uninterrupted by our main broadcasters, to tell the truth. And I think it's absolutely criminal that one of the greatest uh, collections of music in all of music, and that's jazz certainly, um, is being made later. So, uh, I'm a one-man crusade. Yeah, okay, uh -huh. Well, so Michael, my dad always used to say that jazz is 13 men in a band all playing something different. Um, why, <laughs> why was he wrong? Uh, it, well, he is obviously tone deaf. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not with your dad, but, but he's obviously tone deaf, the poor devil. But I mean, no, I mean, I mean well, jazz encompasses the great American songbook, as an example. And that is an imperishable, important uh, body of music, as important as any in all of music. This is the point. When you think of the composers, the Gershwins, the Rogers and Hearts, and, and all those wonderful... Then their music is not being heard. It's nothing short of criminal. And it's stupid. I mean, God knows we've got enough channels now blurting out music that I find offensive, quite frankly. So there's surely room for an imperishable, what should be an imperishable collation, which is informed music for the past 100 years and produced great artists like Louis Armstrong, and you can go on forever, Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald. Come on, are we not to, are we to compare any of today's people who sing for a living with them? If so, you are severely toned up. <laughs> You're including some of your best bits from some of your chat shows, I think, as well, aren't you? Uh, sprinkling that yeah, well, in I mean, as part but, of the show. You know, you know, it's no good doing a show like that and not actually bringing in some of your heroes. And I did, I interviewed you know, Duke Ellington, and I didn't interview Louis Armstrong, but... I, most of my heroes, my musical heroes, I, I managed to get on the show and uh, they didn't let me down at all. So I, I played my part in what I consider to be a crusade to preserve this music. But I just wish there were more encouragement, let us say, from, from major broadcasters, such as Sky. Well, we're, we've got you on the telly right now, Sir Michael. Um, what particular <laughs> interviews from your chat shows stick in your mind? Well, I, let me talk about the ones that we had on the show. I mean, I, I had on, on the show, I had... Uh, uh, what was... Man, the name's going to... Uh, Duke Ellington. I'm fancy forgetting Duke Ellington's name. I mean, the most extraordinary man. I mean, he has a chapter, a book all to himself, and any proper history of music. And he was wonderful and stylish and lovely, and he had a collection of faded beauties who followed him wherever he went in the world. And I got to them and to him when he was in his 60s and 70s, and so were they. But it was a wonderful kind of collection of past romances and all that. And he was a, a deeply sort of, um, I wish we were a romantic man as well. And he played sophisticated lady, and he played Take the A Train and all that. And then to be, sit next to somebody who composed that music, who has his own chapter, his own book, in any history of music, proper history of music, it's just wonderful. And so I've got to meet all my heroes. I never got to meet Louis Armstrong, who was a particular hero of mine, and I just missed out on him. But uh, so, I mean, I'm very lucky, you know, and, and, and those are the examples of the, of the, or some of them, of the um, interviews that I've drawn upon in this series. Okay. I mean, as to the other stuff, well, that's for another time. Sure. I remember um, when yeah, I first. Well, just, 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 sorry, sorry, go on, can go I just on, say go that? On, go on. I, I, I'm, what I meant to say was that the, the, the other stuff is contained in a documentary which is going out uh, this year, uh, later on, because this is the 50th anniversary of the Parkinson show. 50 years ago is when we started it. So Michael, my son, who's my producer now, 
uh, the company. Uh, he's doing a documentary about that. He's doing all the tips and all that sort of stuff. So that should be coming out in a, in a month or two's time. So he's definitely a little thought, because there's one or two good names on that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I remember... Um, 30 odd years ago when I was first starting out you were very kind enough to take me under your wing and one of your top tips which I still do is write whoever you're interviewing no matter how famous they are write their name on the top of the sheet because you might forget their name and you told me that that happened with John Wayne when you were interviewing him I did. I, I, the Duke came into my mind, but I couldn't think what the next name was, Duke Wayne. Uh, but uh, he didn't like me in any case. I didn't much care for him. He was a real sort of hothead, American <laughs> gun lobby and all that sort of stuff. You know, he really was. I mean, it was like talking to a, to a, to a, to a, to a slightly demented sheriff in, a, in an American hick town, you know. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I mean, he, he was that kind of man. You know, he was that kind of American. He was a, a typical of his generation, you know. Gone law and all that sort of stuff. That's what he stood for. He was the sheriff, you know. And it was fascinating to come across somebody as dangerous as he was and as famous as he was in many ways. Yeah. Wow. Jazz FM is where your new shows are documentary later on in the year. We are out of time, Sir Michael, but it's an absolute it's pleasure. It's on. The Jazz FM is on now. The show started last night. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely continues on for a few more episodes and then your documentary later in the year. It's good to talk to That's you, Sir right. Michael. Absolute pleasure, as always. Okay. Thank you. Take care.